For today's video, I'll be telling you about how I failed my driving test three times. Good morning, guys. If this is your first time, welcome. If you're regular here, then welcome back. I'm so glad to have you back on my channel. I made another story time, which you should check out. That had to do with like boys and an encounter with somebody. Basically, I'm telling you about the process it took me to pass my road test and becoming legally allowed to drive in Canada. When I first came to Canada, I was impressed at the bus system coming from Nigeria and coming to Canada. So I didn't really feel pressure to get a car. I honestly did not think I would be driving until I was done with college. That's how comfortable I was. Until I started working, I started going out more and oh my goodness, the Winnipeg bus system is horrible. Absolutely horrible. Like I've had times where I've gone out, I'm at the bus stop waiting for my bus. Bear in mind it's winter time and winter here is like minus 50 degrees Celsius. It's crazy. And I would wait for the bus for an hour. It would first of all say like the bus would be coming in five minutes and it just keeps extending and extending and extending. By the time the bus finally comes, my hands are like, I can't even, it, it, it hurts. Oh, it's so frustrating. Standing out in the cold with people doing gross things on the bus, barely finding any space to sit on the bus. Like it was just so stressful for me. I think the time that was like, you know what, it's time was when I was at work and then I was going back home. This was when I used to be done at work by like 9 p.m. in the heat of winter or at the peak of winter. And I was waiting for my bus to come so that I could come back home. This bus was late. It was late for like 45 minutes or more. I stayed out there. I was freezing. It was so horrible. And then by the time I came back home, my landlords think that I've gotten back home because my bus usually doesn't take that long. They basically then locked the door and there's a way they can lock the door where you can't open it from the outside. So they thought I was back home because I was usually supposed to be back home by that time. So I got back home and the door was locked and I'm ringing the bell and obviously they're sleeping. I'm calling them who's picking their phone that late at night. My phone battery was dying because I had been outside like checking the bus, checking for when the bus is coming. I called my boyfriend. I'm like, this is what's happening. What do I do? He's like, call your friend. I'm like, even if I call my friend, how will I get to their house? Because the bus will probably screw me over again. And then like at this time of the night, the amount of buses that pass have reduced. So I'm like, how am I going to do it? I was like, let me just keep trying to call my landlords. I called, kept calling, calling, ringing the bell, knocking. None of it was working. So I finally said, you know what? Let me call a friend and see if I can go visit them and then stay the night at their house so I picked my phone up I was just trying to dial the number to call them and my phone battery died so I wasn't able to get a hold of my friend I was like oh my gosh I cried and I was like god is this the way I'm going to leave this world is this how I'm going to die am I going to die outside of frostbite luckily for me the neighbors saw me standing out there at that time of the night so they kept calling my landlord and I guess the phone rang enough times that they picked up and they were like hey I don't know if she's your daughter or something but somebody's out there standing outside of your house for how many hours that was when they now finally came out and saw me and they were like i'm so sorry i thought you were back home blah 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 i'm like you know what's fine i just went to my bed took a hot shower which hurt like hell because when you have frozen fingers and you mix it with hot water it's very painful and i just slept and I remember while I was trying to get myself to sleep, I was like, this is not it. I need to get a car. I need to learn how to drive. I just need to figure something out. And then I slept. The way it works, before you get your full license, you have to do the knowledge test, which is basically them testing you to see if you know all the road signs and all of that, like the stop sign, red light, blah, 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 all of that. And I did that a while ago. Because once you do the knowledge test, you have to wait nine months before you can do the road test. So I was like, let me do this knowledge test now that I have no plans of getting a car or driving so that when the time comes i know that i'll be in a rush to get a car or to get my license or any of that so let me get this out of the way so i'd written my knowledge test and gotten my learner's license already even though i had no intentions of driving i traveled to toronto to see my boyfriend and i was like yeah you should teach me how to drive so he was teaching me how to drive but you guys if you're from toronto and you're watching this video why do you people drive like that oh my god like it's crazy here in winnipeg even when you go downtown it's not as crazy as downtown toronto driving like yeah i'm seeing people climbing the line and I'm like, what is this? Anyway, I knew I wanted to learn how to drive, but I knew that there's no way I'm driving with these crazy people. So we literally would go out at 2 a.m. You heard me right, in the middle of the night, we would go out for me to learn how to drive so that I would be driving where there's nobody else. So it's just me on the road. And even then I was scared, we put in a clip because luckily for me, I, like I felt so proud of myself. Like, oh, I'm driving. I wanted to show my mom. I'll put a clip of what that was like. You're going okay. uh, straight. No, I'm supposed to stop traffic light. Yeah, you stop a traffic light. But you're going straight, so you're, oh, you're, the wrong place. you're in the wrong lane, yeah. Yeah, I noticed, but then it was too late to move. No, it wasn't too late, you should have moved. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you see where you're supposed to move. I'm going to the left, 
Now you're going left at the light. Start indicating. Every time you're turning left, mm -mm, see the lane there. See the lane. Turn, turn there. Here. Yes, inside this lane here. And hey, stop. Jesus. Oh, I was on the bus lane. I started off driving in the middle of the night with nobody else on the road. That's how I started. The more we went through the night driving, the more confident I became. I actually got a job while I was in Toronto. When my boyfriend would come and pick me up from work, I'll be like, Can I please drive us back? And I was allowed to drive because I had learners. I just needed somebody to be in the car with me. So he would let me drive, I think like 9 p.m. So there were still cars on the road, but not as many cars. I transitioned from driving at 3 a.m. to being okay driving at 9 p.m. And then I remember eventually Eventually, during the day, my boyfriend would be like, do you want to drive? Do you want to practice driving during the day? And I finally was like, yes. I would literally be driving and he's trying to direct me so we can go somewhere and he's like, switch lanes. I'm like, I cannot switch to the left lane. Are you seeing the way these people are moving? They don't care. They are not slowing down for you. They are not considering you. They don't care about you. You're invisible. I'm like, how am I going to switch? Look at the way these people are coming with full speed. How am I going to switch lanes? He would literally be like, switch lanes, switch lanes. I'm like, I cannot switch lanes. <laughs> I'll keep going. And I'm like, I can't. Can't. I'm like there's no there's no space there's no time for me to switch lanes at times like that he will now be like you know pull over I will literally pull over and switch seats so that he could be <laughs> the one driving so that we could switch lanes that's how terrified I was of driving it was bad and it was so nerve-wracking for me that I couldn't even do it for more than 10 minutes like I would drive for 10 minutes and I'm like I'm tired not because like I'm physically tired but I'm mentally tired of being afraid this bear in mind was before the whole incident back at 20 like when I decided that I need a car. This was before any of that. I was just practicing because I was like, yeah, I have an opportunity to learn. I should learn, you know? So fast forward back to the current time when I now decided that, you know what, this is not making any sense. I need to get the license. I felt like I already knew sort of how to drive, but let me still take lessons. So I spoke to some friends from work. Do you know any driving instructor that's affordable that'll teach me what I need to know in order to pass my road test? And I remember this boy was like, there's this woman in my church that she taught me how to drive, so you should use her. And she was cheaper than all the other people that I had seen so I was like yeah let's do use this woman this was a Nigerian woman I had another friend from work that also wanted to learn to drive so we're like how about like we both get one hour but during my one hour she's in the back seat also learning and during her one hour I'm in the back seat learning so we did that we got to the place we met the woman everything was fine she's like where's your license we showed her our licenses we met her at the parking lot and this woman is like first of all before we even go on the road I want to teach you some things that you need to know I'm like okay cool she goes this is the steering wheel this is the windshield these are the side mirrors this is what you use to signal that you're turning left this is the radio this is your seat belt she came out she said come out come out we came out it's like these are the tires this is the trunk because we are paying her by the hour this took her like 20 minutes she's telling me this is the foot mat i was looking i was like losing my mind and i went first so it was my precious one hour she was using to do all these things finally she said okay let's get into the car we'll go now she made me drive around in circles in the parking lot to park there she would say parking here like not even parallel parking no it was ridiculous after my one hour she was like do you want to do extra 30 minutes i'm like no i'm fine so she asked my friend you want to go now my friend's like yeah actually i think i'll do mine on another day because she had seen like whoa what is this after that i decided i was never using that woman again because that's just dishonest i went to find another person to teach me i went on kijiji kijiji is basically facebook marketplace found another instructor this one was indian so i met him he was cool he was not telling me what the foot mat is i was like yeah this is a good sign and we started off learning to parallel park and his car was a nice car it had backup camera if you don't know what backup camera is like there's a camera at the back of the car that helps you see your back like it was a very nice car i was like mm, this is nice he knows his stuff he taught me how to parallel park i did it he's like wow you're so good i'm like yes i can parallel park so after we learned how to parallel park he's like okay let's get on the road and see how you do on the road and this man will be driving on the road right and then he's He's like okay turn left here and say I forget to signal before I turn left he hits my head like this I said turn left don't you know you signal I'm like am I in primary school right now I continue driving he, he will slap my head I'm like what happened he's like didn't you see the speed limit is this so finally he did it and then I guess he could see my reaction that I didn't like it so he stopped doing that I took two lessons with him when he told me I think you're ready for your road test you're good to go I'm like really he's like yeah so I booked my road test I was scared for my first road test I spoke to my boyfriend about it he's like yo see when I did my own road test I passed on the first try like there's no reason why you should fail yeah people are driving like, all sorts of people are driving like uneducated people drive educated people drive also 
lots of people like if these people are driving i can do it too there's nothing wrong with me like it's driving i was scared but i kept telling myself like if other people can do it you can do it you don't have to be afraid i'll probably be one of those people that will even pass on the first try <sighs> the day of my road test came you always need to go with somebody to do your road test so i asked my landlord if they could be the ones to go because you need someone with a full license to go with you so they went i did not use my trainer's car obviously because i didn't go with my trainer i used another car for the road test the first thing you do on the road test is the parallel parking the examiner was like okay, let's go and parallel park now i'm like yeah let's go and parallel park like my instructor told me i was very good at parallel parking i got it on the first try everything is good so we went to parallel park she's like you have four minutes to complete the park she told me all the things that i needed to meet the car i used doesn't have a clock because <laughs> it's very it's like those ones where you wind the window up like this it doesn't have like a clock and i didn't have my watch and you can't pick up your phone so I, I wasn't even aware of how many minutes it was so i'm like are you going to tell me when it's close to four minutes she's like no i'm not going to tell you anything Okay, time to parallel park. I'm moving, I'm backing up, I'm backing up. I'm like, am I going too close to the curb? And then it hits me. The car that I used to learn to parallel park had a backup camera, and the car that I'm using to do my test does not have a backup camera. So I do not know how to park with a car that does not have a backup camera. And my crazy instructor thought that it's okay to teach people to park with a backup camera. So I'm like, do I, am I going too far back? And then I, I felt like I had gone too far back and I was going to hit the poles because if you hit the pole, you feel. So I'm like, oh, can I start all over? She's like, yeah, sure you as long as you know that you only have four minutes so i started all over and then while i was trying to slowly finally park she was like your time is up and literally my car was like this is how you're parking and my car was still bent like this i'm like so what happens she's like you're going to drive us back to the testing center i'm like so i'm not going to even like do the driving part of the test she's like no drive us back <laughs> So I drove us back, we came out, she's like, okay, come. I went to the counter, she's like, this is it. You had it right the first time, you didn't have to start all over. If you had completed it the first time, you would have passed. You need to practice more, blah, 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 and come back for the test. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I came out. <laughs> going back to go meet my landlord and she's like how was this how was it like i'm like i i feel she was like oh my gosh i'm so sorry blah 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 what happened like that i was in parallel parking i was texting my boyfriend i'm like i failed and before that i told everybody at work that i was going for my work test so i was like oh gosh and i had work that day i'm like there's no way in hell i'm going to work today after i've told everybody i'm going for my work test i'm still feeling the pain of failure then i'll not go and have to break it today i'm like i'm not going to work today my landlord was like, she could see I was sad. She's like, okay, since you're not going to work today, I'm running some errands today, you can hang out with me just to get your mind off things. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. When she took me out to eat, everything. It was when I got back home that I cried. I was like, oh my God. I don't know what it is about it. It was painful. It was literally so, so painful. I cried, I had to go to work and break it to everybody that I failed, everybody was feeling bad for me. My instructor texted me and he was like, oh, how did your test go? I'm like, I failed the parallel parking. And he's like, oh, don't worry, it's normal for people to fail on their first try. You just try again, I'm sure you pass it when you try again. So I booked another test and then he was like, let's do one more lesson before you go for your test again. Because the next test was kind of far, just to refresh your mind. I'm like, okay, cool. So we did the test again. I tried. To to learn to park without a backup camera and then i went for my second test we got to the time for the parallel parking and all of that i'm like yeah so i have to be fast because last time i feel because i wasted too much time so i was fast i got the parallel parking fine perfectly well so i was like oh first task tick all done so we now got on the road and then we we're driving driving everything was going well and then she was like turn left here i'm like yeah of course turn left i signaled all these slaps on my head reminded me me that you know you have to signal a signal and then there was this guy coming from the front that i thought was coming straight towards me because he didn't signal at the very last minute he now turned right so i thought he was coming towards me so i stopped for him to go and then he turned right and then this instructor did not say anything to me it made me go through the whole route it's like wow since she hasn't asked me to go back everything must be good oh boy we got back to the testing center she's like okay come with me i went to the counter i'm like okay i must have passed this time I She's like, unfortunately, you did not pass. 
Say, eh? She was like, when I asked you to turn left at that place, you hesitated. That man was turning right, so you could have turned left at the same time he was turning right. But you waited, and you wasted too much time, and you're wasting the time of the people behind you. You're going to have to come back again and be fast. You can't waste people's time. People have places to be. It seems like you didn't know what you were doing. Jesus Christ. I was pissed this time. I was pissed. I, I felt like that wasn't fair, you know? That's not fair. It wasn't my fault. This guy deceived me and all of that. I was like, how can... I'm getting flashbacks of how unfair I felt it was. Anyway, so I failed that one. She's like, you have to come back again. You did your parallel packing well. Everything was good, but you didn't do that left turn well. I'm like, okay, sure. So I went back home and I was like, okay, I have to go back again. But I didn't think I needed to take another lesson again. So I just booked another road test and then I went for the third road test. I'm like, yeah, I know what to do this time. Don't hesitate. So we went, did the parallel parking yet again. I passed. I was coming from a smaller street, a major highway. So I needed to merge into the highway. And then I was like, okay, Debra, you cannot hesitate. Don't waste time. I saw a chance. I went into the highway. And then I, as I entered into the main highway, the man was like, why did you do that? I'm like, you told me to merge into this highway. So I merged into this highway. And he's like, didn't you see the car behind you? I'm like, yeah, I saw the car behind me. I thought I had enough chance to enter without, you know, hitting him. And he was like, you shouldn't have done that. Like, because of the way you merged into this highway, that guy behind you would have to slow down not to hit you. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, alive though. The, nobody, nothing happened. If my judgment was right, I made it. It's like, no, it's always better to be extra sure than to do things in a haste. I said, ah, ah, wait, I do training all of these instructors in the same place. Before, you people failed me because I was trying to be extra sure, and now you failed me because I'm trying to think fast. I was like, this is not right. Like, what do these people want? That's my question to everybody. Bear in mind, this second and third times, I also told my friends, and I also had to go back and break it to my friends, my landlord that drove me every single person that I failed yet again. And as I'm telling all of them, and they're like, ah, Deborah, well, I've been in the car when you're driving, oh, and you, you drive fine. And I'm like, I know <laughs> I know I'm a good driver this thing is not my fault like what do these people want I'm like this thing is even hopeless at this point like why how am I supposed to know this one wants this one thing this one wants this other thing like and I felt so hopeless I'm like what am I supposed to do I was crying I am not driving again like I give up <laughs> like I don't stand a chance why have I failed three times I was talking to my boyfriend I'm like I don't know what to do I already have a car that I'm driving now what am I going to do with the car with half a license at this point everybody could see how like I had lost hope i remember one time my landlord when she came to me and she's like oh deborah i want to show you something i'm like okay what's it uh, basically everybody knew me as the girl who keeps failing her own test and she's like i saw this newspaper article i think you should read it it's very helpful it's about someone that failed her road test i'm like okay I need all the encouragement i can get now she gave me the newspaper and she left i read the newspaper it was about this woman who has been trying to pass her road test for about 30 years and she has failed it seven times and i was as soon as i was reading i'm like this woman has failed this woman is very bad how is she failing like this it's the second first time second time third time okay maybe she passed the fourth time she failed fifth time failed she failed seven times i was like okay the title says that she failed seven times maybe she passed on the eighth time literally the end of the newspaper said till today she has not passed her road test <laughs> she failed seven times she gave up her husband drives her around or she takes a taxi or something those seven times happened in the space of 30 years so basically till date she didn't pass and me before the way i used to pep talk myself is like everybody eventually passes you might fail 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 but don't worry you'll pass and now i'm reading this newspaper article that is telling me this woman failed seven times and she gave up and she basically has no pass like how does somebody fail their road test seven times so i'm like the same way i was thinking if there are people that have passed we can pass i was not like if somebody has failed seven times it could be you and then my landlord was like oh did you read the article i'm like yeah i read the article but the woman never passed her road test how is it supposed to make me feel better and she was like i just thought it would be good to see people that i'm like <laughs> no it's not good to see people that never passed so i had lost hope basically and i had the car that i was supposed to be driving because silly me got a car before i got my license i'm thinking am i supposed to sell this car now what am i going to do i suffered i worked so hard over the summer to raise the money what's going to happen now my boyfriend i spoke to him and he's like deborah you have not taken any proper lesson taking one lesson 
lesson failing taking another lesson failing or taking that lesson with the first two months those are not proper lessons most people need lessons not because they can't drive like you know how to drive but you need to know what these instructors are looking for you need to take another lesson i'm like i cannot afford to take like so many lessons like that because they're expensive and he's like i'll pay for you to take your lessons but go and take your lessons and let's see how that goes and i'm like what if it doesn't work blah 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 he's like well it's not your money if it doesn't work it's not you that is losing it's my money and that's okay go and take the lesson i'm like okay sure i'm not going back to the nigerian woman i'm not taking the indian woman i went on kijiji again i was like let me find somebody else i checked this other guy he used to be an examiner before so i was like okay since i want to know what people are looking for it's best if it's an ex-examiner that teaches me so i called this guy this was a white guy very professional very kind very encouraging too and he knew his stuff like the way he taught me it gave me confidence because of how confident he was he told me this like these are the things you should look out for the, so much information that I had never heard from any of the other people that I use I heard it in the first class so I'm like if I had used this guy from the beginning I would have known all these things and like he's like Deborah, you know how to drive you're driving fine you just don't know the things that they are looking for I think I took four lessons with him we did lessons all of that stuff he was very very good with that and he was like I think you're ready to take your test now and he was like have you booked your road test yet I'm like no I haven't booked because I did not want to book until my instructor has told me you know what you're ready i have to go and book it now because it was during summer time that's when everybody's no one wants to do their road test during winter because you will fail <laughs> because of how the snow will just mess you up during the summer that's when it's like super busy i think it took me like three weeks or four weeks after he had told me you're ready before i could book my test so i told him and i was like you know what i want to do a mock exam so we did that all of that was good this time i did not tell anybody apart from my boyfriend the date that i had rebooked the test i didn't tell my landlord because these people have had to see me fail three times i'm like deborah is it not enough it's okay why should they see you fail the fourth time my friends from work nobody else knew that i had booked my road test again if i fail let me just feel silently there's no need for everybody to now start feeling bad for me for the fourth time because i didn't want to tell my landlord i was like i need to ask my instructor to be the one to go with me for the test because you always need to go with someone so i'm like okay this is the date i've booked can you go with me he's like you know what another of my students has booked for the, that exact same day and i've already agreed to take them so he couldn't take me so I'm like, that means I have to ask my landlords and just deal with the embarrassment of failing for the fourth time when I go with them and I fail again. So I asked them, they were like, yeah, sure, they'll take me. Obviously, they're super kind. They agreed to take me for the road test again. I was a nervous wreck the day of the road test. I'm, I'm scared. And the thing is that if you fail the fourth time, you have to now take a compulsory two-hour class with the testing company, MPI, before you can take a fifth test. And I'm like, I don't have time for that. Okay, because I cannot fail this fourth. I don't have time to go and take it to our class with them so anyway we went for the final test i did the parallel parking it was fine i did my left turn i merged everything 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 was fine but then i was like there was a time i failed that i failed no one told me that i had failed until i had gotten back to the testing site so i was like still possible that i failed that she just hasn't broken the news to me yet so that i don't go and crash the car out of anger so i did everything blah 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 she hadn't told me while i was still driving she didn't tell me anything like you know what you didn't do this thing well you failed so we drove 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 back to the testing site she's like come with me and when we had and then she's like congratulations you passed hey i was looking at her she's like yeah you passed and you did very well you only had two minor errors but those were not enough to fail you i'm like I was in shock. It was as if I wasn't feeling anything. I was just confused. And then when it finally now hit me, when she was like, okay, come, we need to take your picture for your permanent license. That was when it finally was like, so I actually passed. And it was as if like this whole weight had just lifted off of my shoulders. I just felt free. I was like, oh my God. I was so happy. I was like, really, I passed? And she's like, yeah, you passed. You come take your picture. They took my picture, everything. I was like, oh my God. I went back. I went to meet my landlord. And she's like, how was it? Because now, they are used to me coming out and being like this so they don't approach me with how was it then I now have to break it so she was like how did it go I'm like I passed I passed she was so happy for me obviously called my boyfriend I'm like we passed <laughs> your money did not go to waste for this lesson that you made me take thank god I listened to you and actually took it I was so happy all of that and then I could drive you know <laughs> could drive and not be scared or worried but guys even after that I was like yeah I'm a good driver I'm there was a time I was driving, this was during the summer, and I put down the window because I was feeling myself, I was like, oh, driving, loud music, wind in my hair, and a bee entered my car. Like, these bees, they don't have loyalty. Me, Deborah, bee, 
You come into my car and harass me when I'm driving. No respect. This bee came, this bee was in my face like this. And I'm trying to, and I was terrified because I've never been stung by a bee, but people always make a big deal about it. And I was trying to drive. I was trying to like push it out the window and drive. I almost hit this guy. I don't know how to today. I've never bashed the car. It's only God that saved me because... <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, oh god, what am I supposed to do? I was trying to get off the road, go and pull over and get the bee out. Finally pulled over, got the bee out. I'm like, I'm never driving in the summer with my windows down again because that thing is so dangerous. You can't think straight. You can't focus on the road. Like, people were honking at me. Like, what is this girl doing? I was driving like this. I finally pulled over. Moral of the story is, if you're also someone that's trying to pass your road test, I feel you. It's very scary. And the reason why it's so scary is because we're all used to writing tests where, like, you're writing, you know, you're actually writing on paper and no one's actually just like staring at you we're not used to that kind of test situation where you're having to do something just to you and someone is scrutinizing your every move i think that's why it's very scary for us and sometimes you might even be good at driving when it's not your test and then on your test day because of how nervous you are you feel my advice to you is embrace the nerves um know that it's normal and try to just know that those nerves actually it's your body trying to like it's like the adrenaline i think in your body getting you ready for for the situation Everybody knows that it's a big deal and it's trying to like pump you up. So embrace the nerves. Also, I'll say is even if you know how to drive, even if say your mom or your dad or somebody else has taught you how to drive, and when I say to drive, like actually drive, still take a test and take a test with someone that knows what they're doing, someone that knows what these testing people are looking for. I think that's a very, very big deal. Also, when you're learning, if possible, learn with the car that you're going to use for your road test. So I wouldn't advise to do it during the winter. So if you fail, it's normal. I think sometimes it's not even a thing of you. I mean, sometimes it's you that's made a mistake. Sometimes it just depends on who you've gotten, the instructor you've gotten, and how strict they want to be. But don't lose hope. Don't give up. I don't think you'll fail seven times before you pass. And even if you do fail seven times before you pass, keep trying because you will pass eventually. I will do more story times about failure because it's a part of life, man. I've had my fair... I feel like the share I've had is even more than my fair share. So that you know that it's normal, man. It's normal. And if you just keep trying, you pass. But if there's any other kind of story time you want me to do, let me know. I've only had two story times so far but i feel like both of these story times have been me coming to tell you about things that have been done to me but guys people are always talking about being screwed over who is the person screwing people over i'll tell you a story about when i've been the one to screw somebody over so you know that i'm not all like mm -mm -mm, i only do the right things i also mess up i've been a backstabber before and i will tell you a story of that please remember to like remember to subscribe if you liked this video subscribe because that helps me um you know and as much as i want to share my life with you guys it wouldn't hurt to make some money out of it so subscribing helps me eventually start to make money out of doing this so share so that more people can see my stuff and the channel can grow follow me on instagram guys so you can interact with me if you do follow me you should dm me and say hi or say hi on my comments i would love to hear from you i love you guys so much i really do love you guys and i hope you stick around